Hello and welcome to my uh, Pro Tools and Dolby Atmos overview. Now I kind of broke my own rule on this one. I try to keep my videos as short and to the point as, as much as possible, but this, this whole uh, topic is pretty complex. So I'll, I'll apologize in advance for kind of a longer video, but hopefully it will provide some information that will allow you to set up your system for Dolby Atmos and get up and running and, and create some, some great Atmos mixes. Thanks. Hi, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna get into Dolby Atmos. What the heck is Dolby Atmos? And what does it take to set up in your Pro Tools studio? And uh, I'm gonna to try to do this in <laughs> plain English, regular speak. If you've tried to read any of the documentation from Dolby or Avid, I don't know, maybe it's just me. The term that keeps coming to mind is mind numbing when you try to read this documentation. So hopefully this will give you a little bit of an overview of what it is and how you can implement it in your studio. So the first question is, is don't I need to spend a gazillion dollars to put this in my studio? The answer is no. Nowadays, you can set up Pro Tools uh, Studio, which is formerly known as Pro Tools Standard, the smaller version of Pro Tools, which by the way is not really smaller anymore, we'll get into that, starting in version 2022.4, when Pro Tools took on the Pro Tools Studio name, it enabled all of the surround mixing functionality, which also enabled the ability to do Dolby Atmos. You add the Dolby Atmos render software, and integrate that to your uh, Pro Tools system and you too can do Dolby Atmos. And you're thinking, great, but don't I need a 15 speakers? Well, no, yes, no. <laughs> you can do Dolby Atmos mixing in headphones. And that's kind of the beauty of, or the selling point of Dolby Atmos is that the end user can experience this Dolby Atmos, this spatial audio, this immersive sound in many different speaker configurations. So if you've got, you know, a 7.1.2, a 714, a 916, whatever speaker configuration, and we'll get into what all that means, uh, that's great. But if you don't and you want to listen to it in headphones, you can. So look at uh, your iPhone or your Android um, phone and your headphones that go along with that device. You are able to listen to Dolby Atmos, assuming you're relatively current with software and hardware on those devices. Um, you can listen to Dolby Atmos or spatial audio or immersive sound in uh, from a variety of different uh, dis distributors, music distributors, Apple Music, Tidal, uh, Amazon Music, um, Netflix Movies, um, what else, what else? So there's others I'm sure, but anyway. So what do I need? Okay. You need one of two versions of Pro Tools software, either Pro Tools Studio, and it must be version 2022.4 or later. I'm on the Avid website right here, and this is the overview. So Pro Tools Studio. The other version that you can use is the Pro Tools Ultimate, formerly known as Pro Tools HD, and it's a little bit more expensive. It typically runs on uh, Avid Pro Tools HD hardware. If you want to run the Atmos mastering suite where you're running two separate PC or two two separate CPUs, you have to run Pro Tools Ultimate, and you got to get into some bigger hardware for that. You also need one of two versions of Dolby Atmos software. There's the production suite, there's the mastering suite, and I'll break down the difference, but the production suite software can be purchased at the Avid website, avid.com. Normal price is $299, $300, but um, it's December of 2022 right now. They're running a special on the Dolby Atmos production suite software. You can get it for $99. So jump on that quickly if you're thinking about doing this. Um, you can also get, um, if you don't want to purchase it just yet, I think it's a 90-day free trial, which is pretty cool too. So you have plenty of time to try it out. The Dolby Atmos Mastering Suite software is $999, a thousand bucks, and can be purchased at any of the uh, any Dolby resellers. So reach out to your local um, 
Dolby reseller, probably where you purchase your, your Pro Tools gear or your studio gear, they will likely have it. So those are the two flavors and I will break down a little bit more uh, on the difference of those um, shortly. Um, one thing to point out on Production Suite as of right now, I think it's Mac only. So you want to run Pro Tools Studio or Pro Tools Ultimate uh, and Dolby Atmos software with the production, Dolby Atmos production suite on the same computer. It has to be Mac at this moment. Of course, you need an audio interface of some sort. Now, the size of your audio interface is going to depend on what speaker configuration, which is the next thing you need. Do you want to do a full you know, speaker setup 7.1.2, of course, that's 10 speakers, um, or 7.1.4, that's 12 speakers, which means you're gonna need to have at least 12 outputs. Those outputs could be analog, they could be digital, they could be Dante. Um, it depends on the speaker and or power amp setup that you have. But if you wanna do full, you know, physical speaker setup of 7.1.4 or greater, you need to have at least 12 physical outputs to connect to those speakers. Now, if you just want to mix in headphones, then you could get away with um, a much smaller in audio interface, maybe two channel output, probably four, maybe two to your speakers and then another two to your headphones. And you can send your binaural uh, Dolby Atmos mix to outputs three and four. So you can get away with a smaller audio interface if you want to do um, binaural headphone mixing of Atmos material. But if you want the full on speaker setup, you got to have a, a, a larger audio interface to accommodate that. Speakers, speakers, speakers. Uh, if you're gonna get into a full Dolby Atmos mixing environment, then yes, you do need some speakers. And there's not a single answer or a single correct answer, I should say, for the number of speakers that you need. You can have um, a 7.1.4, you can have a 9.1.6. Some could argue that you could have a 5.1.4 uh, speaker configuration. I think, um, and again, it comes back to the whole scalability of what, what Dolby Atmos is bringing to the table. But I would say that a 7.1.4 is probably the minimum that you would want to really take advantage of, of accurate mixing. Um, some would argue 9.1.6 or 11.1.8. I don't know. Um, Shoot for 7.1.4, um, ask your uh, local reseller, or if you know somebody who's mixing in Dolby Atmos, um, get their opinion on what the speaker configuration to get is. But um, you do need some speakers, and they should be matched, and they need to be calibrated in terms of their EQ, uh, right, and their time alignment so that your mixing is is accurate into your um, your Dolby Atmos space. So <clears throat> that comes in, that brings up another conversation and you know the Avid Matrix Studio audio interface does provide DSP to EQ your speakers and calibrate them um, timing wise and so does the, the, the larger matrix. Other audio interfaces may or may not have that functionality built into it. So uh, keep that in mind. That may require that you get additional hardware to be able to calibrate or tune your, your space. All right, as far as computers, now if you wanna run the Dolby Atmos production suite, as we mentioned earlier, that's available only for Mac operating systems as of now. And again, this is December 2022. I'm at the Avid website here and I'm looking at the, um, the specs for the Dolby Atmos production suite. OS compatibility is Mac OS right now, and I suspect there will be a PC version at some point. I don't know if that's going to happen or not. I suspect it will, but as of right now, if you want to do the production suite, Dolby Atmos production suite, it does require that you run it on a Mac. Now, um, 
That means you're running both Pro Tools software, Pro Tools Studio, or Pro Tools Ultimate, and the Dolby Atmos production suite on the same computer. If you want to have a larger system and get into the Dolby Atmos mastering suite, you can run Pro Tools on Windows, and I believe the mastering suite software is available on um, Windows as well. So here it is on the Dolby website. Uh, the Dolby Atmos production suite software is currently Mac operating system only, as we mentioned a second ago. The Dolby Atmos mastering suite can run on a separate dedicated PC or Mac. So Windows compatibility does exist for Dolby Atmos mastering suite. And remember, that's running your system in a two CPU, two computer configuration. Pro Tools on one, Dolby Atmos mastering suite on the other. And you have to have enough hardware uh, to be able to send up to 128 channels from the Pro Tools system CPU to the uh, Dolby Atmos mastering CPU, whether it's Mac or PC, it doesn't matter. You still got to be able to uh, route 128 channels. That's typically done through Dante or Matty. So that does require, you know, significant hardware to accomplish that. Okay, so I've launched it here, and you can see right out of the gate it threw an audio drive error. And I'm going to briefly get into the configuration. And if you if you know me at all, you know that I have a serious love hate relationship with Avid, not with Pro Tools. I love Pro Tools. It's Avid <laughs> that I have uh, issue with. And that's a long story, and we'll get into it another time. And what I mean by that in this case is that a lot of this functionality, as far as I'm, as I'm concerned, should be rolled into the Pro Tools app. Other apps are doing it, Avid. Hey, Avid, wake up. Roll this functionality into Pro Tools. Don't make me jump through all this configuration hoops to make this work. Make it easier. Anyway, with that said, as it stands right now, this is what we need to do. So I have the Dolby Renderer launched, and I'm going to um, show you Pro Tools as well. So I have an HDX system. So the first thing I need to do in my playback engine in Pro Tools is switch my playback engine from HDX to Dolby Audio Bridge. Yes, sounds weird. That is a new playback engine that will be available once you install the Dolby Atmos Renderer software. So my playback engine is Dolby Audio Bridge. I'm gonna click OK there in Pro Tools. And it's gonna quit and relaunch. And while it does that, I'm going to go into the Dolby Atmos Renderer Preferences and set up its hardware. So the driver uh, tab of the Dolby Atmos Renderer Preferences, I'm using Core Audio. The audio input is the Dolby Audio Bridge. So Pro Tools is sending up to 128 channels of, uh, 128 channels of audio via this Dolby Audio Bridge from Pro Tools to the Dolby Atmos render. So that's the input for the Dolby Atmos render. And then the output of the render is my Pro Tools HDX hardware. So I'm good right there. I'm gonna click accept. And hopefully it's a little bit happier now. And I'm gonna go into input mode. There's input mode and master mode. So input means that the Dolby Atmos render application is ready to receive audio streaming from Pro Tools. The master mode allows me to open up and play back uh, an audio file, a Dolby Atmos audio file that I've already created or someone else has created. So I'm going to go to input mode and I'm going to um, close master file because we don't need that in there. Okay, let me go over to Pro Tools and I am going to hit cancel right here because there's a couple of configurations I want to make before I create a session. So I'm going to hide the Dolby Atmos renderer. We'll bring Pro Tools back up. And I'm going to go to the Setup menu, Peripherals. And you'll notice that all the way to the right, there's a Dolby Atmos tab. And I'm going to enable that. Now, the Dolby Atmos render application and Pro Tools are on the same computer. So uh, that's w basically what defines the, the Dolby Atmos production suite. The mastering suite uses two separate computers. 
Pro Tools is on one and the Dolby Atmos render software is on a second one. That's basically the definition of the mastering suite and I'll get into a little bit more on that. But I'm doing the production suite, so Pro Tools and the uh, RMU, the renderer, Dolby Atmos renderer, also called RMU, live on the same computer. So when I click enable, it basically just finds it, right? Uh, it's on the Pro, my Mac Pro and I'm gonna let it go at that, okay? Now, before I create a session, I'm gonna go into the I.O. setup, everybody's favorite window, I know, I know, I know. And I'm gonna start fresh. I'm gonna delete all of this stuff, right? And show you what I might do to, to set this up because there's all kinds of garbage going on in here. So I have gone to my uh, Pro Tools I.O. setup window in the output tab I option clicked on the paths that selects them option clicking on selects all of them alt click on a Windows machine and um, I deleted them all and then I did the same thing on the bus bus tab so in the bus tab on the default section I want to choose use Dolby Atmos render stereo now you may not see these options available until you have enabled the Dolby Atmos renderer in the Pro Tools peripherals right so that's kind of step one now if I hit default it's going to create a big huge mess <laughs> but embrace it embrace it we're being positive we're keeping it on the up all right here it is I've created by hitting the default button a single 10 channel bed and I'm going to get into that in addition to that I've created uh, 118 divided by 2 what is that 100 and, uh, or, uh, 59 59 stereo objects all right here they are I'm going to scroll down so that you can see them all Right. That's what we are going to use to put our different elements of our Pro Tools session into this spatial audio environment. I'm going to go over to the Output tab. When I click the Default button on the Bus tab, it automatically created all of the same output. So here's the Output tab. Here's my 10-channel bed. Here's my objects. Now I can choose to make a bunch of mono objects if I want. Uh, you can mix and match, you can do a bunch of stereo, you can do uh, a mono, whatever the case that you may need. Of course, if you create stereos, you can choose one or the other of a stereo pair. So it's often easier just to do stereos. Um, and what this is, is again, this is 128 channels that I've created or 128 outputs in Pro Tools that are all going to be routed via that Dolby Audio bridge to the Dolby Audio renderer. The Dolby Audio renderer is going to receive all that audio and you know based on where you pan it and place it within the panning in Pro Tools, it will uh, render that and create a mix and it will kick out that mix in several different formats. If for me it might be a 712 format, 916 or 510, you can create different formats. It's scalable all the way down to binaural, which is a headphones, just putting headphones in and listening to this spatial audio. So here's my 128 channels. I'm going to click OK and I will create a new session and I'm going to call it Atmos for everyone. OK, here's my session. It's blank. I don't have anything in it. Um, the first thing I need to do, though, is to create a time code source in Pro Tools that's going to go to um, the Dolby Render. So follow me on this one. So I'm going to create a new track. It could be an audio track. It can be an aux track. It doesn't really matter. I'll just make it an audio track and I'll call it LTC, Linear Time Code. And since I've installed the Dolby Atmos renderer software on my computer, it's placed this plugin in my Pro Tools plugins folder. If I go to plugin, Dolby Laboratories, Dolby LTC generator. Okay, so I've got that in there, but I need to assign it to an output above and beyond the 128 channels that I created previously. So I'm going to go back to my I.O. setup. Oh, yes, back for more I.O. setup fun. And in the output tab, I'm going to go down to the bottom. I'm going to select the last one. We'll create a new path. 
we'll call it LTC. There it is, and it should correspond to channel 129, which is what I'm using here for the, you know, the Adobe, the Adobe Audio Bridge is one through 128, and this LTC channel is 129. Now I've set this up in the output tab. I have not done anything with it in the bus tab. I do not assign this to um, the renderer directly. So in other words, over here in the mapping to renderer column, I do not check that. I leave that unchecked. The bus is set to LTC and it's mapped to output LTC. All right, so I click OK. My plugin is there. If I start playback, I hear the t I hear the output, but I gotta fix the output. I, I created it, but I didn't assign it. Okay, so there we go. Output LTC. That's what L uh, time code sounds like, by the way. <laughs> okay, so if I hit play now, I see the time code um, as an audio signal, linear time code. It's an audio signal. Now, if I go over to the Dolby renderer and I don't see it landing over here. I should see this time code rolling because Pro Tools is. I'm, I've got my um, online button enabled, so something's wrong here. Let me take that off. And I will go to the Dolby Atmos Preferences, and I will say LTC input channel. It's set to 128. It should be 129. That's what I just created on the uh, Pro Tools side. And okay, now if I hit the online button, there we go. Whoops, frame rate mismatch. Okay, so this is a good thing to point out. The frame rate of the Dolby Render is not the same frame rate of the uh, Pro Tools session. So uh, you could argue that there's uh, any frame rate is fine. The, the default for the Dolby Render is 24 right here. So I'm gonna go into Pro Tools and I'm gonna set the frame rate of Pro Tools to 24 as well. So I'll go to Setup, Session, and I'll set the time code rate. Now I could set both, to th as long as they're the same in Pro Tools and in the Dolby Renderer. So I'm gonna go to 24 here, just because. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna go to, yeah, I'll keep it at 24, what the heck. Now, if I start playback here, and I go over to the Dolby Renderer, I see time code and they should match 9, 10, 11, 12, yes. Now if I turn this online button off, uh, it stops tracking that time code. Now this is important because this will keep the Dolby Renderer and Pro Tools application in sync with each other, right? As you're creating these um, automation moves with panning and all that stuff, the Dolby Render needs to know exactly where in the session the Pro Tools uh, moves are happening. So you want to make sure that the Dolby Render is online and that it's receiving time code and that the frame rates of both Pro Tools and the Dolby Render match. Okay, all right, so I'm gonna go back over to Pro Tools. We'll stop playback. And I don't really need to even see this um, track. I'm gonna solo safe it so that in the event I solo another track in Pro Tools, this track doesn't get muted. I want this time code to roll all the time, right? And I'm gonna hide it. I don't need to see it. It's gonna do its thing in the background, hidden. But I will create a new track. And I'm just gonna create a mono audio track and I'm gonna call it um, uh, Tone. Because I was gonna do a tone generator. And I have the object view enabled, right? So inserts, IO, and object view is enabled. And I currently do not have it assigned to any of the objects. The output of the track is to my 10 channel bed. And the object is not enabled or assigned, all right? So I'm gonna go to object, and I'm just gonna choose the first one, object 11 and you'll notice that the bus button becomes available. So this will allow me to toggle this, the output of this track from the bed or to, to an object, right? So let's take a look at what that is. So here's the output. I ha do not have the object enabled. I'm gonna put um, just signal generator on here. And we'll pull up the panner. I'm gonna make the uh, Pro Tools window very small so that we can see both 
the renderer and Pro Tools at the same time. Okay, so it's coming out left and right. There's one and two, channels one and two of my bed. Now as I take this um, panner and move things around, Oops, you know what? The output's not set correctly. It's set to the bed, the stereo version of the bed. So let me go here. Bed, I'm going to go to the full, not the stereo, but the full 10 channel. Now as I take this joystick and move it around, you can see a couple of things going on here, right? So I'm going to put it, the puck all the way in the left, uh, the right rear uh, channel, and that's channel number eight. So the green uh, puck or light there is giving me an indication that signal's present, and here's a meter for it as well. So I can look at two different locations. Now the bed in the Dolby Render is the top 10 channels, and this uh, track is routed through the bed at this moment. Okay, now if I switch it to um, object, you'll notice that the number 11 object in the Dolby Render becomes lit, and I don't see it in the bed because I sent it to an object, but you do still see the metering information right here. But also, more importantly, if I look at the 3D version of the room, I should be able to see this puck moving and there I do right so I see as I make these uh, pan moves in Pro Tools I see it following in the metering and in the 3D room theater room in uh, Dolby Render so I, I know that my audio Pro Tools is talking to the uh, Dolby Atmos Render number one and my audio is making it there all right so this section I'm going to get into a little bit of routing in Pro Tools with Dolby Atmos in mind. Now this is one way to do it, or a couple of different ways. It's not the only way, and of course you can get creative with your own routing and do all kinds of different things. But So this is just a couple ideas to, to kick around, right? So I have the, my one uh, mono audio track that I created previously. I'm gonna hide it for a second. I'm gonna mute it and I'm gonna hide it. And I'm going to create a new not mono, but 7.1.2 aux input. And I'm gonna call it the bed. And I could call it 10 channel bed or whatever. I already know it's 10 channel, so I don't need to add that, but I'm just gonna call it the bed, right? And this is an aux track. So what this allows me to do is kind of use this as a master fader of sorts, right? So I can create other elements in the session that route into the bed. So when do I want to use a bed? When do I want to use an object? And there's, you know, uh, again, this is a suggestion, not a rule. In, in, in my mind, when I think about the mix that I'm creating here in Atmos, making its way to different speaker systems. And again, remember, that's the whole thing with At Atmos is it can play back on a full, you know, 916 system or it can scale down to these different speaker configurations that people might have in their home or all the way down to headphones. If I uh, associate a element in the session, an audio element in the session, and I need to have that element move around in the 3D space, I want it to include a little more metadata and, and to be specific, the X, Y, and Z coordinates of where that source sits in the 3D room. And the object provides that additional metadata. Now I can use the bed to place things in whatever location I want, you know, left, right, center, surrounds, ceilings. Um, but I would lean towards the bed to maybe use static elements. Not everything in the session needs to move around all the time. You can place certain things in the session that may stay in left and right, for example, or wherever you want to put them. But they're not going to move, you just want to place them there. So think about things that you're going to use within the session, you know, or elements that you're going to mix in the session, and where do you want them to go, right? So. I could say um, in this bed, this is kind of my, my master fader. I could create, let me pull up that tone track and I'm gonna move it down here. Whoops. So instead of sending it to an object, I could send it into the bed. Now if I unmute it, you'll see it there. You should see it there. And I don't, oh, cause I haven't set the output, input. Okay, I gotta create a bus, all right. Good, this is good. 
I forgot to do that. I'm going to the IO setup menu, I mean a window, our, our, our favorite. Now, earlier we were in here, we created 128 outputs. These are buses, output buses that are mapped to the renderer. I need to create some buses, internal buses for Pro Tools, right? So I'm gonna select on the last item in here and I'm gonna create a few things. I'm gonna create a 7.1.2 bus and I'm gonna name it that, 7.1.2 bus and create the sub paths, yes please. And I'll create, I don't know, I'll create, let's say four stereo um, boxes, right? So if I hit create, there they are at the bottom of my bus list in the IO setup. Now, if I go to the input of my bed, I can choose bus 712 or 712 bus. That's the input. The output of that track is, is the 10 channel bed that is going to the Dolby renderer. Now for my tone, I wanna send it to the bed. I can do it directly to the bed or I can send it through the aux track. If I send it through the aux track, then I can apply you know, EQ compression or whatever, sort of like a master fader of sorts. And I'm going to go to bus. Now, if I wanted to go, you know, full 712, I can do that. Or I can send it to any kind of subset of that um, bed as well. So maybe I want this to go only to um, the stereo channels, right? Let me mute that so we don't hear it, All right? So here's my, my tone. If I bring up the panner there, it's only going to go to the left and right because I set the output of this monotone track to go to left and right only. I can choose whatever kind of combination of those uh, bed channels that I want to. Of course, I could hit all of them, right? 712 bus, or I could maybe I wanted to do quad. I want this element in my session to only hit the left, the right, uh, front and the left and right surrounds. Um, so now I should have, yeah, you know, I'm looking at the meter on the bed track and, and there it is. Now, if I bring this uh, window closed a little bit and we bring up the render and unmute it, I should see the same thing going to the renderer. And I do. And you notice because I'm going through the bed, I don't see that little uh, puck in the 3D room inside the renderer, right? If I switch it over to an object, of course, then it appears, right? Okay. So this is routing. And, um, you know, a lot of this is similar to what you've been doing in Pro Tools all along with submixing. So I can create multiple tracks. I can submix them into the bed. I can create multiple tracks and submix them into an object if I want. I can be I can create a mono or a stereo object. So let me do that. I'm going to mute this one. I'm going to hide it. I'm going to create a stereo audio track. And I'm going to call it stereo. That's really creative. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. And I'm going to use tone generator again, just because it's, I know where it is. Multi mono plugin, other signal generator. There it is going out the bed because that's by default. I don't have a bus. I mean, I don't have an object assigned. So I'm going to go to the object menu. I'm going to choose 13 and 14 and I'm going to enable it. And there it is. Now, um, as I pan that thing around, let me bring up the panner. It's linked. And it's a stereo audio track. So it's got a left and right. And you can see that not only in the metering uh, of the Dolby render, but also I see 13 and 14 is lit. That's signal present. I see it in the meters here. And I also see two pucks in the 3D uh, you know, room view of the Dolby render. So I can take a stereo audio track and set its output to a stereo object. I could submix uh, several different elements into a stereo aux track and set its output to a stereo object. Uh, if I want to, you know, kind of blend uh, uh, several tracks into one object or one stereo object. So there's all kinds of routing that you can do. 
let's dig in a little bit deeper on on the routing of a track. I'm going to focus on this one track here. Of course, um, the I.O. column is visible. If you don't see that in your system, there's a couple of ways you can get to it. If you go to View, Edit Window, Views, and make sure I.O. is checked. That's the input and the output for the track. That's been the same in Pro Tools forever. Um, the, which still is functional here in Atmos, but uh, there's an additional layer of routing that may apply, and that's with the object. So <clears throat> make sure that both the I.O. and the object items are checked so that you can see both the I.O. and the object column. And um, this is where all, all of your routing occurs based on whether you want this to route into the bed or maybe you want to submix it into other tracks in, in the session or you want to send it out as an object. So remember in Atmos, we've got a 10 channel bed and that's uh, one through 10 of the 128 channels that we have going from Pro Tools to the, to the render, the Dolby Atmos render, and then the other 118 uh, are objects. In this example here, I have a mono audio track, and I can choose, and I can automate this as well, I can pick and choose if I want to route this particular track, or any track for that matter, into the bed or into uh, a, um, an object. And I do that in the object column here, just by toggling object and bus, we'll switch the output from the traditional Pro Tools output, track output, to an object. Now before I can assign or you know enable object mode, I have to first assign it to an object. So click on the top button there and pick and choose any one of the 118. This is the first one, number 11. It's the first one after the 10 channel bed. And um, I can pick any one I want. The yellow ones are, are used elsewhere in the session, so the ones that are white are available. Um, so object 11, I'm currently in object mode, and this little green button here, the object control mode master, basically this passes the panning metadata that we are creating in the panner inside Pro Tools. <clears throat> left, right, you know, wherever you put it in the surround environment, that information, that metadata is sent to the Dolby renderer so that it, it lands over there in the same way. So let's make sure, let's see if this happens here. I should have, and I don't, why don't I input, let's see. Okay, I see it there, there we go. All right, so I've enabled just the signal generator so we can hear it. And then, of course, my panning window, I can put it wherever I want to. I see it in the metering, and also I see it in the, um, the 3D little view inside the Dolby renderer. Now, if I were to switch this out of object mode and send it back through the bed, which I will do, I'll just put it into the bed. Now, the audio is still reaching the uh, Dolby Atmos render. I can see it here based on where I've got it panned. It's hitting channels 5, 6, 7, and 8 right now. Um, but you don't see a uh, little puck in the room. So you will only get a puck in that room if it's uh, routed to the render as an object, right? Okay, uh, so there's a couple of different modes there. So object mode, uh, I mean the... Um, Object control mode, master mode. If I click it again, it's it's basically a record mode. This the only uh, instance I can see of this is if you have a a larger uh, Pro Tools setup where you've got two rigs connected to each other, and you're you're basically sending this this metadata from one Pro Tools system over through another into the um, into the renderer. Uh, complex, but think about feature film where you've got two or three or four Pro Tool systems with a really high track count all kind of merging into a, a recorder, um, and that recorder feeds the Dolby Atmos render. The last one is basically disabling that metadata, but this allows for some other kind of cool functionality that, I don't know, you may or may not use it very often, but Hey, it's kind of cool. So in this example, I just duplicated this tone track and I was playing around with it a little bit. Um, the top one here is got um, just a 1K tone, which I've been using um, up to this point. The other one I switched to, to pink noise. 
so it makes a little bit different sound so you can hear it um, differently. And I've assigned both of these tracks to Object 11, which means the audio from two different tracks is both going into Object 11 path into the renderer. And if I switch that on, I should see it now. Yeah, I see it 11. So I'm going to mute the top one. Let me move this over a little bit. Okay, so if I mute the bottom one, 11 goes away. If I unmute it, there I see signal on 11. And same thing for the top one. If I unmute the top one, I see signal there. So both channels are feeding the same audio path, but the routing information will come, or the panning information, I should say, will be coming from the track that has the object in master control mode. So for example, the top one, and I'll unmute both of them, and you'll see that, um, I don't know, you can't really hear it because it's stereo, but I'm getting tone and pink noise in the same channel. Let's see if I can see it over here, see if it follows. Okay, so the top track is providing my actual panning. I'm going to mute it. Mute the top one, but pan on the top one. And the, the, the bottom one, the duplicate here, is actually one that's providing the the pink noise, but you can see it's following the panning. So um, this just allows me to assign uh, two or more tracks to the same audio output, and I can have the panning of those two follow the exact same thing. Uh, probably not something you do all the time, but hey, might be cool. You could layer up some, some different tracks and create a nice um, layered sound effect or keyboard patch or whatever and bed panner <laughs> the panner for the bed or the panner as an object there's a slight difference for the most part they're the same but there is a little bit of difference uh, functionality um, on uh, when you switch back and forth to um, from bus to object mode and I stumbled upon this at one point and I wanted to just add this because it can be a little bit confusing. So the first thing to note when you are in bus mode, of course the LFE volume will give you LFE and I'm seeing that on the meter over here, right? But when you switch to object mode, you do not get any LFE. I'm taking the LFE gain all the way up and I get that because LFE will uh, you know, is not so uh, positional. It's not positioned as um, as much as a regular, you know, sound is a regular higher frequency sound. So I, I get why the LFE is limited. So it will uh, retain or help uh, retain or maintain the position that this panned object will land. So there's no LFE when you're in object mode. Another thing that is kind of a bummer is the way the center channel works. So if I go back to bus mode and I have my um, signal generator panned right in the middle for the center channel, um, I can take the center percentage down and it will take out the center signal. And I'm looking at the meters over there and push it over to the left and right, which is kind of a handy thing sometimes. Um, to, to use that center percentage for. Uh, for whatever reason, in object mode, that does not work. When you take the center per percentage out, you actually see the graphic go away, but it doesn't impact the signal going to the, um, to the renderer. So center percentage does not work when you're in object mode. And let's see, so LFE, center percentage, and what else is there? There was another one. Um, height is the same. Um, if you wanted to pull the center channel out, there is some masking that you can use with um, the panning where you can eliminate some of the speakers, but they don't have one for just the center channel, which I thought was a little bit odd, right? So I can pick and choose what channels I want to eliminate from the panning, right? So if I go to this one here, and you'll see the, um, the two s surround speakers are gone. So if I route, um, nothing will go to the surrounds. And if I choose this, um, 
This cuts out the sides. The surrounds are back, but the sides are gone. This one will bring in just the center and the two surrounds, the left and right, and the sides are gone. So there's um, a several, let's see, one, two, six different masks. And this is just left, center, right, uh, which is handy. That could be useful. And then this is uh, sides and surrounds, but no, um, let's see if height's in there too. Yeah, height's in there too. Uh, but there's no um, left, center, right. So I'm not sure why there's not a mask that excludes the center but keeps the left and right. Oh, well. Um, other than that, the panner is pretty much the same uh, between the bus mode and the object mode. Automation. Automation is the same as it's been in Pro Tools forever. Basically, enable the automation right mode that you want to use. In this case, I'll use touch and I'll bring up the panner and we will start playback. And I'm just going to make some moves here and you'll see it auto touch is enabled and I'll let go and it will go back. And if I want to see any of these parameters, I can look at the automation that I've written there and uh, let's play it back and see if it works. We should see all that panning over here in the render and I do both in the meters and in the 3D space. All right, so pretty straight ahead there. Um, just the normal Pro Tools automation, touch, latch, right, all of those modes um, work the same. Okay, you've got your mix done. You've routed all of your tracks either through the bed or through a few or many objects, however you've decided to do that. You've placed them in the spaces that you want. You've written automation, you've EQ'd, you've compressed, you've done all your things there. You need to create a final a deliverable that you can send to somebody and that's going to do you can do it in a couple of ways I'm just going to cover the bounce to mix so from within Pro Tools um, you would go to file menu and choose bounce to mix because um, there's no content in the timeline well that's a problem <laughs> let me fix that real quick Okay, I've created some audio in there so that we have something to bounce out. But there's a couple of things I need to, to do to make this kind of, you know, fulfill the standard deliverables that you would expect to see in Adobe Atmos file. So, and that refers to time code. The standard for an, <clears throat> a master file that you've created is uh, that it starts at one hour and currently my session does not start at one hour so therefore um, uh, I, I'm, I have a small problem here so what I want to do is I want to go into Pro Tools into the setup menu to the session window and I want the session start time to be just prior a few seconds prior to one hour so that would be 59 minutes and um, 58 seconds, All right? <clears throat> Unable to maintain original time code, yes, click OK. OK, so the start time of my session is 59.58. Now, if I go into Pro Tools and I look at the time code counter, uh, the very beginning of the session, if I go to the top, is 59.58. I want to make sure that my song starts exactly at one hour. So this is something you should probably do earlier in the session, not afterwards at the, at the end. Like all this automation is not going to be included because it's prior to um, what, actually it's not. I'm good there. Okay, so let me zoom in just a little bit. So basically my song is going to start at um, one hour. So that is the beginning. So I'm gonna make a marker in Pro Tools, song start. 
and that's the beginning. It starts at one hour. I have two seconds prior to that one hour marker so that I have a pre-roll. And this kind of comes back to that thing with Avid, you know, come on, the fact that I have two separate apps for the renderer and Pro Tools and I gotta send time code between the two, even when they're on the same computer, come on, that's crazy. Roll that stuff, Avid, into, into the app so I don't have to do this. Anyway, so I have set the session start of Pro Tools to be uh, 59 minutes, 58 seconds, and zero frames. The first uh, field here is hours, minutes, seconds, frames. So 59, 58. You can set this whatever you want. It doesn't have to be 59, 58. It just has to be, uh, you know, prior to one hour by at least a few seconds. You could make it 59 minutes in, you know, zero seconds, and you would have a, a minute of space between the one hour mark. It doesn't really matter. But you do want to make your file start at one hour. So what that means is, just like in Pro Tools, when I do a bounce to mix in, in any other session, I, I want to make a selection in the timeline uh, to define where the bounce is going to start and where the bounce is going to end. So my cursor is currently at one hour exactly. And just for the sake of argument, I'm going to say that I want this bounce to be, um, I'm going to say just two minutes, two minutes long, right? So now the selection starts at one hour and it ends at two minutes. So my song in this case is going, going to be two minutes long, even though I don't have a full two minutes. However long you want to make it is fine. Just make sure that it starts at one hour and that it ends uh, past the very last you know, element in your session. And remember, keep a, a little bit of additional space for reverb tails or long fade outs, any of those things. You don't want to cut them off. Okay, so that's done. And uh, I will go to File Menu, Bounce Mix. And uh, the file type is Wave Dolby Atmos, right? So you'll see this additional option available in your Bounce uh, Mix window uh, when you have the render installed. And um, create master file, yes. Beds, one, yes. Objects, three. This is a small session. Add FFO. First frame of audio is at one hour. That's exactly what we want. Our frame rate is 24. Yes, it is. Uh, create re-renders. Now, I haven't gotten into re-renders. I'm going to save that for another video, but I can create those as well if we want to in this same single file that I'm going to bounce out. Uh, I'm not going to include that right now. I'm going to uncheck that and audio we're all good and i'm gonna put it in the bounce files folder at most for everyone bounce one is what i'm gonna name it let's go to bounce i'm doing it offline so it's gonna happen faster than real time which is a beautiful thing and there it is and i will go out to my bounce folder within the session bounce files and there it is now, this file is going to be <clears throat> considerably larger than, you know, for example, a stereo bounce to disc that you might do on a regular session uh, because it's going to include a, potentially a lot more audio. This is small, two, 225 megabytes. I only had two tracks in there, uh, three tracks or whatever it is. Um, as you add more higher track count, these bounces are going to be large. They can be a few, several hundred megabytes, even a gig or two gigabytes in size. That's not unusual. It is a wave file. It ends in .wave, but it is a Dolby Atmos um, master file. And that's what you would deliver.